Hey guys, Caleb here, and welcome back to yet another video. And today we're going to be doing some FF7 stuff. And we're going to be talking about 10 things that you probably... I'm going to say probably you... You very much missed them in the game because they're either a huge pain in the ass to get or they're just so obscure that you had no idea that they were in the game. But 10 things, nonetheless, that you probably missed in your first playthrough or playthroughs of Final Fantasy VII. These are considered missable. And what that means is once you pass up the opportunity to get these said things, you have no way to go back and get them. They are gone, they are missable, you missed them. So the first time that you have the opportunity to get this thing, whatever it happens to be, and you do not get it, well, opportunity's gone. You cannot get it, there's just no way to do it. There are some items in the game that actually seem missable, but they are not. You can actually go and get them in disc three via shop. Uh, for example, there is an item called the Rune Blade in Mount Nibelheim. Seems missable, but it's not, but you would have no idea of knowing that. You can actually go and buy that again in Disc 3. There are multiple items in the game that actually share this same concept. For example, the Power Soul. Right before Materia Keeper, if you just so happen to not pick that up before you fight Materia Keeper, well, it's, you might be like, oh, well, can't go back and get it. You actually can, but you can actually buy that stuff back in Disc 3 via Junon. So, these are 10 things that you missed on your playthrough or playthroughs of Final Fantasy VII. And let's be honest, you, you, you missed them. You don't, you, you're not fooling anybody. You, you missed them. You can admit it. It's okay. I did too. And on my 100% speed runs, I've missed them too. So it's okay. I forgot about it. You can admit it. Number one, Iron Bangle. This armor piece doesn't really seem like a big deal, but it's not. I mean, it's one of the first items that you can actually buy, right? I mean, it's got 10 defense, two magic defense, it only costs 160 gil, and it's only got one materia slot, like big deal, right? You buy this at the same screen where Seventh Heaven is. There's a shop at the bottom that actually sells it, along with grenades as well. And that is the only place that you can get the Iron Bangle. And I mean it. Trust me, I know. I missed it on one of my runs and I was really mad about it. And I looked up every single possible source. You can't get it. Not only is this one of the first items that you can actually buy in the game, but it's actually the very first missable in the game. And again, once you get on that train, you cannot go back and get it. Your opportunity for the Iron Bangle is gone. Sad face. Number two, the Ghost Hand. This item can only be obtained from the ghosts in the train graveyard by either stealing it or getting it off of a drop. The drop is significantly more rare than the steel. The steel being about 50% or so, and the drop being about 4%. And again, this item isn't particularly good. It's actually kind of crappy. All it does is just suck the MP out of an enemy. And that's the only way to actually get it. This item can be actually kind of annoying to get because sometimes the ghosts disappear and you can't actually target them, but once they reappear, you can try to steal your precious little ghost hand for your completionist run. Number three, the warrior bangle. Unlike the other items that I previously listed, this one is not so useless. This is a defense item, it's another bangle, with only two materia slots, but it's got a pretty meaty 96 defense and 21 magic defense. This item is stolen off of an enemy called an Eagle Gunner, which the Eagle Gunner can also only be encountered once, and that is on the train. You have four train fights, uh, whenever you go back to Corel, you gotta stop the train and all that. The very final fight of that four fight gauntlet is the Eagle Gunner. 
This is kind of a pain in the ass to steal, so if you plan on getting it, try to equip all of your three characters with steel because it can take a while. Also, this thing does pretty meaty damage to you. It's got another attack where it can hit all three of your characters, so be prepared, get some heals, and good luck. Number four, the Earth Mallet. The Earth Mallet is a popular item that is frequently featured in my Final Fantasy VII 100% speedrun that I do, and my chat gets all hype over it. And it drops off of an enemy called Big Shoes, which is what my chat likes to call it, but it's actually a Gigas in the first screen of the Whirlwind Maze right after you fight Schizo. This item is kind of a pain in the ass to get because it one, it's a 12.5% drop, and two, the Gigas itself is kind of rare, and yeah, it's just not fun to get. And don't forget, if you want to see more live recordings of these runs, Final Fantasy VII, you should definitely go and follow my Twitch. Did I mention that before? But to make things way worse, what it likes to do is cast Quake 3. And that deals a shit ton of damage. And when I say shit ton, I mean like 1100 and can result in a total party wipe, which is just great after you've played the game for many, many, many hours and you're trying to get this item, so that's really fun. This item actually casts Quake 3 on every enemy on the screen, so it's actually quite useful. I don't believe it bases uh, its damage off of your magic stat or anything, I think it's just a, a set formula and, it's, and it varies. But, needless to say, if you happen to get one, feel free to use it. It's actually going to do a considerable amount of damage. Now the thing is about getting the Gigas again, is that there is a save point that is not too far away from the area in which you encounter the Gigas. So if you want to actually go and save and then go back, you can actually do that. In fact, the only time you can actually prevent yourself from going back to the area in which Giga spawns is after you defeat Genova Death. Once you do that, you kind of lock yourself away and you're shit out of luck and now you can't get your precious Earth Mallet, so GG's. As you noticed, I'm in a different shirt, different day, filming different stuff. Um, so, if you guys don't like it, then you can f Number 5. The Umbrella. The Umbrella is a commonly missed item because, well, there's only one way to get it, and it's not exactly easy to do. What you have to do is actually score 5,000 plus in the Speed Square the first time that you go to the Gold Saucer. It's not the only time that you go to the Golden Saucer, but it's easiest to do whenever you first visit there. It has 58 attack, 10 magic defense, and 20 vitality, but it has no materia slots. Another interesting thing about the Umbrella is that it's one of three weapons in the game that actually gives you a plus five critical chance increase, which is the highest it can go. And once again, it's immissible. So, once Aerith kicks the bucket, and you move on to disc two, you no longer have the ability to get the Umbrella. There are other 5k plus score awards in the Golden Saucer, the Speed Square portion, but it's no longer the Umbrella. Getting 5,000 points in the Speed Square is pretty difficult for people who haven't practiced it a bunch. It requires memorization of where things are on the screen, precision, and, well, not getting pissed off. So, after disc 1, when that happens, the umbrella just takes up a slot in your inventory, and that's about all it's good for. Number 6. Shotgun. The shotgun, much like the iron bangle, can only be bought in a specific place, and that is in disc 1, Rocket Town. It's sold by the house on the left side and where, where you kind of come in from, but that is the only place that you can get it. And again, it's only sold on disc one. It's for 3,100 gil. It has 48 attack, 12 magic, and only two slots that you can link for normal growth. But the thing is, this is immiscible. I would know. This is the second weapon available for Vincent. 
Now, after you beat Palmer and get access to the Tiny Bronco, it's a bit difficult to get back to Rocket Town, if it's even worth it at this point. Because you have to go to the Golden Saucer, then you have to go to the Temple of the Ancients and everything, and you still don't have access to the airship at that point, because that's kind of midway through this too. But, the point is, after you've missed the shotgun, it's no longer there. But let's be honest, it's probably not a big deal, because it's not that good of a weapon anyway. Number 7. Yoshi Yuki. The Yoshi Yuki shares the same principle as the shotgun, as it can only be obtained in Disc 1 in Rocket Town. You have to talk to the old man next to the shop, and he talks about the rocket, uh, and then eventually he gives you the Yoshi Yuki. Now the Yoshi Yuki is actually a pretty decent weapon. With only 56 attack, it actually doesn't seem like that good of a weapon whenever you're this late into the game. However, it has a hidden element. When one party member is dead, the attack power doubles. And when two party members are dead, the attack power triples. This weapon doesn't really see a whole lot of use. However, in solo cloud challenge runs, this is going to be your go-to for the most of the game. So don't miss it if you're doing one of those. Number 8. Added Effect Materia. Added Effect Materia doesn't really see a whole lot of use either. However, it can be quite useful. It is found in the Cave of the Gi, in the first room technically. But, you have to go to the second screen in order to get it. You have to go in the bottom left hand corner and there is a passageway that leads to the added effect materia. After slipping and sliding on the goo, whatever it is, and possibly getting hit by spikes multiple times. There is only one of these in the entire game and what makes this missable is the fact that after you beat the boss, you can't actually go back into this area. There are multiple ways to use added effect materia, but my favorite way is putting it on your armor and combining it with Destruct, which makes you immune to death. And Curse Ring has the 60 second countdown and causes you to die, while also getting the effects of the Curse Ring after the timer runs out. So, very, very useful. Hey guys, did I mention my Twitch channel? Make sure to follow- Number 9. Behemoth Horn. The Behemoth Horn is kind of a pain in the ass to get, because on the revisit when you go back to the Shinra building, if you so choose to, what you have to do is walk down those massive flight of steps once again, and after you pass a few floors, you'll see it sitting on the ground in a bag, Behemoth Horn. This is actually one of the better weapons that Red 13 has access to. With 91 attack, 26 magic, 18 mind, and 35 vitality, with 6 link slots. Pretty good. There are lots of good items in the Shinra revisit, and if Red 13 is one of your main party members, you don't want to miss that one. But again, it is missable. Once you kill Hojo, you'll no longer have access to go back there and grab your precious behemoth horn. So again, sad face. Number 10. Pandora's Box. Pandora's Box made a lot of people pissed off. The interesting thing about Pandora's Box is that the reason it's missable is because a zombie dragon has to cast it. The problem with the zombie dragon casting it is that it only casts Pandora's Box one time per playthrough. After he casts it the first time, he will not cast it again. You will definitely have to reset your game or your last save file if you want the chance to get it. It's not too bad though because you probably have an enemy skill and at least one of your characters by this point. I mean, it is at the end of the game. Pandora's box costs a 110 MP and does pretty good magic damage to everything on the screen. And as well as ignoring defenses, it's not too bad to use. But again, the MP cost is quite heavy. Getting the zombie dragon to cast Pandora's box is the easy part. All you have to do is just bring his HP to zero and he won't die immediately, but he will cast Pandora's box as a final attack. And again, 
you can try to do it again, but after he casts it one time in your playthrough, he will not do it again. So guys, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. Final Fantasy VII, 10 things that you've probably missed. We've been over this. This video was a lot of fun to make, and I actually learned a couple things doing it. I hope this helps some of you by showing you the things that are missable in Final Fantasy VII. Next time, you just have a sudden urge to go through the game and 100% it, or try to. It's quite difficult. I don't know. So guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. And Final Fantasy VII Remake is getting ever closer, guys. So there will be lots of videos on that. But again, thank you for watching today's video. Hope everybody has a great day. See you later. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like the content, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and my Twitch. And more importantly, don't forget to sub to the YouTube channel. Thank you.